I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We're co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this TV show. Today, we're going to talk with a documentary filmmaker about his newest movie, Satan's Guide to the Bible. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. Our fascinating and fun guest today, Zeke Pystrup, is a filmmaker. He's also hosted a number of TV shows, including for the Ski Channel. His Feature film, ski documentary, Downhill, the Bill Johnson story, won the best adventure film at the Vail Film Festival. He's also produced the documentary Apocalypse Later, Harold Camping versus the End of the World. Zeke Pystrup's newest movie, Satan's Guide to the Bible, discusses heavy topics but in a fun way, and we'll see a little of that film in a minute. So, Zeke Pystrup, welcome to Free Thought Matters. <laughs> Unhumbled and blessed to be with you, Ann, Lori, and Dan. Thank you for having me. Dan, we've met before at uh, the great Dr. Hector Avalos's service at Iowa State. And Lori, we have never met, uh, but I've seen you a ton because I'm a big Christian television watcher. So, Sunday morning, boom, there's Joel Osteen, boom, Bobby Schuler, and then boom, huh? What is going on on this channel? So just as a non-believer, I just think, uh, I wanna thank you for allowing me on Free Thought Matters. And I wanna give serious props to the FFRF, Freedom From Religion Foundation, all non-believers, atheists, agnostics. It's something we can point to uh, that makes us uh, feel legitimate, uh, that we're not evil people, that we don't need a book to be a good person. So, so you, thank you for having me. You watch our show on KCOP in Los Angeles, right? KCOP. I mean, I grew up uh, KCOP, Adam 12, Flintstones. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe I'm talking to you on KCOP right now. <laughs> well, Dan, you know, you're a SoCal dude. You know. I grew up in Southern California. I know the whole area. And I know I, I know where you live, too. So uh, so we're going to talk about your newest movie. But you, you, you did produce that movie about Harold Camping, the doomsday prophet about the end of the world. Are you kind of glad that he was wrong? Uh, you know, I did run into some issues uh, with that film because at first they agreed, hey, yeah, come up, talk to Harold. We like the review you got uh, in Hollywood Reporter for Downhill. Thank you for mentioning Downhill in your intro. Uh, so I went up there, did an interview, but then they called me back and said, you know what? You know, the floods and earthquakes are going to ruin post-production. <laughs> so uh, what I pitched them on was doing daily videos. Hey, I'll record something, edit all night, post it in the morning, and we'll count down the days in real time. Uh, and so that's how I gathered the footage for that film. If you go on YouTube and search Harold Camping Countdown, there's still some of those clips up there. Well, we'll talk um, about that yes. a little bit uh, later, but um, that was yep. pretty clever way to put, put that <laughs> together. So your latest film, Zeke, is called Satan's Guide to the Bible, <laughs> and it deals with biblical scholarship. How did you happen to become interested in such a topic? You know, I think you eventually want to have good answers uh, for why you don't believe. And I grew up in a seriously Christian fundamentalist town. Uh, maybe there were two families who were non-believers. So, you know, I've been challenged my whole life uh, to counter the idea that I'm going to hell, right? Uh, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> I don't believe in hell. 
Uh, so yeah, biblical studies is something I think naturally you fall into, and it's been two decades now um, that I've been reading. I'm not a scholar, so we when we get into the weeds of scholars, uh, ships, you know, topics. I don't have a PhD, but I'm a serious fanboy of scholars. Uh, the first DVD I got was a Bart Ehrman uh, Learning Company. Uh, my parents gifted me for my birthday, and I pick it, picked out the New Testament from Bart Ehrman. Uh, got a copy of Orthodox Corruption of Scripture shortly thereafter, and also found at the same time that I love reading. You know, if you read what you love, you'll love reading. So I've been reading on the topic now for, yeah, more than 20 years. It's an addiction that uh, doesn't seem to, is, is not going to cease stopping. So there's a reason why you have a felt board behind you there, and we're going to see that reason right now when we look at the trailer for your new film, Satan's Guide to the Bible. It can't be. Oh my gosh. Is that? Your teacher. Your substitute Sunday school teacher. Bible secrets? None of us will believe your secrets. Evil! And he won't share them with us? It's for a pretty obvious reason that they don't tell their parishioners these things. If they really told them, their members would be lost. Ministers don't want to lose their jobs. Goodbye health insurance. Big secrets about Jesus? Secrets about Jesus? They're all liars there. Modern biblical scholarship comes from... Christians? Church-going, pious people. What about the cemeteries? Is that Jesus? Jesus golfs? Am I getting grounded? Satan. Thanks, Jen. Noted. <laughs> so, Zeke, for uh, the benefit of someone like me and others who didn't attend evangelical Sunday school, what is the significance of using felt board? I did not attend either. So, thankfully, I dated a lovely evangelical lady who did. And she shared her memories with me about the felt board and the Sunday school songs on a walk. And by the end of the walk, Father Abraham had many sons, many <laughs> sons had Father Abraham. A song I had never heard was my favorite song by the end of that walk. Uh, so, yes, yeah, she shared her stories of the felt board. So in Sunday school, she expressed to me that if you uh, were allowed to pin a character up on the board, especially Jesus, in front of everybody— that that was like the high of Sunday school. Uh, so when she shared this, it, the revelation immediately struck me what I could do with all this scholarship footage I had been gathering around the idea of pastors going to seminary, learning a bunch of stuff they can't share with their congregations. Uh, the idea that biblical studies takes place within Christian seminaries and Catholic divinity schools, and what they find out about the Bible doesn't fit the traditional Christian script. So I had all this footage gathered over seven, eight years of going to different conferences and different scholars, reading books continually. And when she shared the felt board and the Sunday school songs, it was like, aha! <laughs> I do remember going to Sunday school as a kid and having the felt board put up Moses and put up the, the baby Jesus in the manger and putting up the parting of the red, just with these cut out felt pictures. So that's what your film basically is, is based on in that felt board, right? <laughs> yeah, Satan takes over Sunday school. He teaches the kids all the things their pastor learned at seminary, but won't share because he'll get fired. <laughs> so your, your film just came out at the in the end of December, I think the day after Christmas in December, and I think it's doing really well. How well is it doing, and how can people see the film? Yeah, we released it on December 26th because Satan's not trying to overshadow anybody's birthday. Uh, the first day, uh, we had seven people at the beginning of the YouTube premiere, so that's five less than Jesus. We peaked at 39 people, no zeros behind that, 39. 
first day we did like 700 uh, views. Uh, it took us about a couple weeks to get the first 50,000, but we're about to pass 450,000 uh, while we're talking. So hopefully when this airs, uh, yeah, we'll be much higher at that point. But yeah, the response has been incredible. Beyond anything uh, I could ever uh, have hoped for, especially in the comment section, uh, people are really just over the top. Um, and the movie is paywall-free, commercial-free, and will always remain so. Now, two other things I want to add about the film quickly uh, that is important. Not just meeting a lovely evangelical lady led to this film, but Tim Johnson is my producer and collaborator. Uh, he's also the voice of Satan. Tim Johnson, DreamWorks animation director of Ants, Home with Rihanna, Over the Hedge. Uh, so collaborating with Tim, who is a true Jedi of content. His entire family worked on this film. Everybody worked on this film for free. His son, Booker, super talented, just graduated from USC art school. He did all the dioramas. Uh, so this really was a labor of love of a lot of people uh, not getting paid. Uh, so yeah, I want to mention Tim Johnson and, uh, and his son and his family, everybody in the Johnson family Thank you. So let's get to the content. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of serious content. Uh, I bet a lot of viewers would be surprised to know where the strongest biblical criticism is taking place. Who is actually doing the, the most serious biblical criticism? Yeah, that is the, the odd thing that it is in the seminaries, the Christian seminaries, and in the divinity schools. Um, you know, there's a part in the film that Ron Hendel talks about, Dr. Ron Hendel from Berkeley, that these scholars set out thinking that the other sciences would only prove the Bible to be right. Uh, so they set out on this mission thinking that archaeology would prove the Bible to be right. But when they got to Wally World, yeah, it was closed. Yeah. Um, so, but still today is where that scholarship comes from. Uh, but it's also why most of this stuff is not known by the congregation, because who is this information for? Who do biblical scholars serve? Are they serving faith communities? Because faith communities don't want to hear what they have to say. Are they serving atheists? Atheists want to throw the Bible out with the bathwater. So neither group really wants to hear what biblical scholars have to say, which is why most of this information has remained uh, unheard of for so long. Thankfully, YouTube, uh, there's a lot of YouTube channels now where these scholars will show up on and the information is getting out there, but it's been a really insular world for a long time, biblical studies. So what are some of these secrets that pastors are not telling their congregations? Uh, secrets, but also the standard stuff. I mean, that's the only time in the film where the liberals and, or the non-believers and the believers agree that this is the standard stuff you would learn if you went to any mainline Christian seminary. Uh, so yes, secrets, but for anyone who's familiar with biblical studies, it really is just the standard stuff. They're not gonna see anything in my film and go, wow, that's new. There's nothing new in biblical studies. Uh, some of the secrets, uh, Israelites never entered the promised land. They are from the promised land. So even though there may have been some escaped slaves who were part of the early Israelite settlements, uh, they wouldn't have made up a significant uh, percentage at all. That these are Canaanites writing their own backstory uh, the same way everybody else is, trying to make their people, their heroes look better than yours. Everybody's borrowing ideas from each other. Everybody's making up their own backstories. And the backstory of being a slaves in Egypt, escaping, wandering in the forest, entering the promised land, uh, none of that happened. That's where the archaeology uh, failed these Christian scholars going to look for evidence. You know, even after the Six Day War ended in 1967, Israel sent a bunch of people out to the Sinai when they controlled the Sinai looking for evidence of large groups, campsites. Uh, and, and nothing's ever been found. And that early Israelite settlements are a continuation of Canaanite culture. Uh, when it comes to the literary, uh, everything is a branch from Canaanite culture, not 
and there's there's no real Egyptian influence. So, I mean, I think this myth that Jews were enslaved in Egypt remains a very controversial and timely issue, that they're holding back this information, and look what it leads to politically. Yeah. yeah, in the comments section, there are a lot of comments about how a lot of these issues do, people feel, parallel what we're witnessing right now. Uh, you know, Dan and uh, my favorite scholar, uh, Dr. Hector Avalos, used scarce resource theory to explain religious violence. And the really tragic thing about uh, religious violence is that it doesn't need to be scarce. The Holy Land does not need to be scarce. Uh, you know, the uh, scripture doesn't need to be scarce. Salvation doesn't need to be scarce. But yeah, Holy Land doesn't need to be scarce. It's not, there's not oil there. There's not water there. Uh, it's just holy. Let's expand the Holy Land. So we're going to take a break, Zeke, but we will be back in a minute. We're speaking with Zeke Pystrup, the director and producer of a new film called Satan's Guide to the Bible. And when we come back, Zeke, we want to ask and talk a little bit more about your other documentary on Harold Camping. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. There's no possibility that it will not happen. Christian radio broadcast, Harold Camping. The apocalypse is scheduled for Saturday. The rapture is coming May 21st. The Bible guarantees it. Wake up, judgment is coming May 21. What is going on and if there's anything I can do to like stop it? What is their basis for daring to say that it will not happen? It basically says in the Bible, the bad day knoweth no man. That's one of the signs. Are you on crack cocaine? Am I on cocaine? Whenever they're living, it's going to be near their own time. He didn't say to know it. Now get ready to get in the ark. He gave it time. And the book of Daniel says that the end will come after 1,290 days. We could, of course, look at the book of Mark. This generation will not pass away. It's a perfectly symmetrical argument. And we know that as long as the direction of our thinking is to God be the glory. Well, you're a modern day now. A week away, six days more, five days, four days. Three, two, one day. <laughs> For the apocalypse. And that's part of the documentary Apocalypse Later, Harold Camping versus the End of the World, produced and directed by our guest Zeke Pystrup. That must have been a fun project to work on, Zeke. Shot, edited. Uh, yeah, I'm a one-man band type. Uh, it was, but it was very stressful. We had 18-hour days. Like we, I mentioned earlier in the show, we pitched Harold on this idea of doing daily videos. Uh, so while I was thinking, what do I need for the documentary? At the same time, I'm shooting these clips that are counting down the last days. But I listened to Harold Camping for 20 years. And when I heard that the end of the world was coming, I knew I had to be there. So it was super special to shoot him front row, open forum every day. And we really hit it off. You know, Harold... Uh, He's a hard worker, and it's hard not to admire uh, how hard he worked 
and how kind he was to other people. That's not to say that a lot of people weren't hurt, uh, tragically yes. hurt monetarily with their lives. Yes. Uh, but, you know, interacting with Harold, you know, it was it was a real treat for me being a fan of his for so long. I think a Harold like Vin Scully, hmm. you know, Dan's a SoCal guy, you know, it's, it's just soothing. It was soothing to listen to Harold. Of course, I was interested in his theology, very dark flavor of Christianity coming out of uh, his show. But uh, he was a soothing guy to listen to when you're on your way to Mammoth. Yeah, but unfortunately, some people lost everything and some people killed themselves. So he did a great deal of harm, too. I would ask, though, and I like to point out, uh, did Harold, though, perpetuate the idea of a second coming? When a preacher gets on there, Raul Reese gets on Southern California radio and says, you know, the end is coming in our lifetime. Uh, so Harold, yes, shares in the blame for uh, the, the damage he caused in his wake. But so does every preacher who perpetuates this idea that Jesus is coming soon. Most churches that I listen to on the radio or attend uh, when I'm tourist of the holy style, uh, checking out different churches. Yeah, the end is coming right now. And Harold didn't do that. Well, yeah. the Bible does that. Yeah. Jesus in the Bible does that. The Bible that. does that. The Bible does that. The preachers do that. Yeah. It's perpetuated by a lot of people. So to get super mad at uh, Harold, I think is a little unfair because, you know, there's going to be n more Harolds. Another Harold's coming. There's probably one right now. He's just not getting a lot of publicity. So the world did not end in March 2011, but it did end for Harold Camping a couple years later. He finally did come to the end. So how, how can people see that film? It's on a lot of streamers, Amazon Prime, uh, Vudu, iTunes. Okay. It's free on a YouTube channel called uh, Parable Religious Docs, although they cut the last shot. How dare you, Parable? I give Harold a hug. Uh. Can I give you a hug? Uh, which is an act that, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to include it in the film, but it turned out to be a moment that a lot of people like to comment on. Uh, so, yeah, it's available on a lot of streamers. Just search Apocalypse Later, Harold Camping. Uh, you'll find it. Very proud of that film. Uh, thank you for, for plugging it. So we, we want to return to your new film, Satan's Guide to the Bible. And we do have another clip. Satan. Sweet. Yes, Kathy? If most biblical scholars are Christians and these secrets you're sharing are taught in seminaries, well, my question is, why would Christians attack the Bible? That wasn't the intention of the scholars that created biblical studies. They wanted to elucidate the Bible and show its truth, and they believed that all sorts of scholarship would be compatible with the Bible. And how'd that turn out? That was overly optimistic. Thinking that archaeology would verify the Bible. But then, uh, you know, it turned out that it didn't. No, it did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Ugh, uh, whatever. So what do biblical scholars, mostly Christian biblical scholars, think today about the Bible's version of history? Today, most of what was held 100 years ago, say around 1900, as history is no longer held that way. Certainly the creation stories are not held to be history. Talky snake. Most of the patriarchal narratives are not held to be history. A phony bro. Moses is not held to be mostly historical. Demon lies. The Exodus is either minimized or not held to be what is depicted in the Bible. The biblical texts are not historically reliable accounts of early Israelite history. Says who? The more history we learned, turns out that a lot of the biblical history was simply wrong. It was nice to see Hector Avalos. He was my go-to guy when it came to the Old Testament scholarship. You interviewed some true leaders in biblical scholarship for this film, didn't you? Dr. Avalos, Dr. John J. Collins, legend at uh, Yale Divinity School, Dr. Ron Hendel uh, at Berkeley, uh, Dr. Susan Neidich at Amherst, uh, and Dale C. Allison. I finally got uh, Dr. Allison in the film. Uh, yeah, just superstars of biblical studies, all scholars. I'm huge uh, fanboy of that I've read all their books. So uh, it, it feels great to uh, for them to trust me to be in the film. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've sent it to all of them and I've gotten great responses back. So, Zeke, why are pastors and priests not talking about these things? It really is an issue of uh, employment and 
I think, you know, it's sort of the do no harm approach. Uh, you know, you don't, Amy Freikholm, Dr. Amy Freikholm has a line in the film where she says, you know, what do you do with all this stuff when you don't feel like your congregation is ready for it? So there's an element of pandering for sure. But what's happened is that we have a ton of people who have grown up as fundamentalist Christians because they're not being exposed to the standard stuff. Um, you know, Dr. Collins told me an example of one of his students who uh, asked him to come speak, came and spoke on the book of Daniel, and the parishioners just wanted to know how it related to the end times, right? So that's Bible study, right? Yeah. Bible study— Biblical studies, they sound the same, but they're, they have nothing to do with each other. Uh, Bible study, more of reading the Bible as a flat text, this has one meaning that I'm trying to discern. Biblical studies allows each author to give their version of who this God character is or whoever the characters are. We have to take in each individual author seriously. That's a difference between biblical studies and Bible studies. So, and very serious consequences for our democracy right now because a lot of fundamentalists are turning into Christian nationalists and they could use some education from your new movie, Satan's Guide That's to the Bible. That's why I released the film for free. I could have gone the film festival uh, you know, distributor route, but with Greg Abbott in Texas, what's going on with him, what's going on with Mike Johnson, maybe he won't be the House Speaker by the time this airs, hmm. but... Uh, yeah, that this is a real threat to democracy, this Christian nationalist, oftentimes fascist uh, movement that we have in America is a real threat. So, you know, yeah, I see my film as a resource uh, and it'll always be free. It'll be commercial free and paywall free until the end. Available on YouTube, Satan's Guide to the Bible. Thank you so much, Zeke, for joining us today. Unhumbled and blessed, Andy, Lori, Dan, thank you. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.